What's happening, everybody? What's going on? Spot market money. Here we go. Whew. July 4th coming up, right? Anybody traveling? Anybody going anywhere? What's up, Philip? MT Fuel Corp. Yo. Hey, did you get your speed turtle, MT Fuel Corp? I know you said you had like 200 firefighter buddies just driving around in your pickup trucks, hitting the flashers, doing all that good stuff, you know, uh, Rocking out the speed turtle. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Brandon? What's happening? What else we got here? Red Raider. What's up? Trucking and OD podcast. What's going on? Jose, James G. What's going on, James? You've been busy. Uh, Philip, what's happening? So here's MT Fuel Corp. You know, Bobby's, <clears throat> he's not hauling nothing. You know, except fuel. He's not running that flatbed. Of course, you know, when the fuel business is rolling, he's only one guy. He can't be in two different trucks. I think he needs to hire some employees, man. You know, hire somebody. Drive that fuel truck. What's up, Al? What's going on? Cascade Transport. Look at all these guys popping in here. Robert's in here. Overtaxed. Doing a barbecue. Fourth of July. Executive Solutions. What's going on? Uh, Nomad Trucker. What's happening? Show you the money? All right, we'll show you the money. There's all kinds of money in the spot market. It's really, really good. Short stuff, paying great money. 2018 level money. Uh, so there you go. It's back, right? And it's going to stay a while because if you go in the stores, not much there. Still not much there. Um, Rob, you know, he had a little <coughs> JB. <clears throat> Not a problem. Uh, and I understand that, you know, these, uh, some of these brokers, you know, a lot of them, some of them are going to the point where they're saying, oh, well, you know, we will, uh, we'll pay detention or we'll pay truck or not use, you know, whatever uh, numbers, but, you know, included in the invoice, but they won't send you a new rate con. Well, if they don't send you a new rate con. You can invoice them while you want, but uh, without that new rate count legally, they don't have to pay you. They only pay what's on the rate count. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it is right there. Ali, yes, uh, we are still hiring owner operators. Um, we got another gentleman coming on probably next week sometime. Probably depends on his IRP plate deal. Um, been busy this morning doing quarterly garbage, right? Uh, IRP plate renewals, quarterly uh, IFTA stuff, uh, filings for foreign corporation, all kinds of states. That's one headache you have if you want to do interstate. Uh, lots and lots of paperwork, lots of stuff. I uh, talked to Thunder Funding, Willie at Thunder Funding yesterday, had a really good conversation with him yesterday um, about different funding things, things that they're going to, you know, be coming up with. And they already had it implemented, uh, you know, so I could do the brokerage side with them. Uh, they already had it implemented, but the COVID thing put some things on, on hold. And, uh, but it's coming, it's coming out, um, you know, sometime this year, it'll be out probably. And uh, so, you know, that's the thing. You, I'm not going to, let me put it this way. I personally, I would not factor with a bank personally. That's my personal uh, thing of it. I would not factor with a bank. Uh, a lot of people do. Uh, and the reason why is, one, you're going to have to have a year contract. That's usually what they do. And they'll probably have a lot of hidden backdoor stuff. 
they're a bank. Think about it, folks. They're a bank. They got fees, 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 and they're not going to give you some astronomical uh, rate without some backdoor um, small print because uh, they're going to get their money one way or another. They're a bank. You ever seen a bank actually want to give you something? So that's just my opinion. Uh, and you won't get the customer service either. So, moving forward. Uh, Jerome Jones says, what are your requirements to lease on? Just go to liketrucking.com, click on the page, and all the requirements are right on there. Um, what are the numbers to contact you? I actually sent you a DM on Instagram if you want to check it out. All right, I'll look. Um, I'll look and see if I can find that. I don't really get on Instagram that much, but, you know, we'll look and, and see. All right, so let's uh, let's bring this in here. This is the new current with the 123 lower board. Uh, van load availability map. Arizona was yellow yesterday. They went green. They went green. You know what that means? Green means go, right? Look at all the red here. Van's looking good. Now, we'll be nice to the uh, flat betters out there because they work harder than van drivers. You know, we just swing doors. We don't tarp, chain, all that stuff. Uh, you know, flat's looking pretty good here in the Midwest, south, up here in Oregon and California. And I think if you have Oregon, uh, if you're doing Oregon, you have some people driving it. When you first start with Oregon, you got to do monthly. Don't forget to do your monthly. Don't get penalized, folks. Do your monthly. Um, Cascade Transport, if you're watching. Oh, oh, brother. <laughs> that, wait until you see the bill for driving through Oregon. Whoo! Well, actually, if you want to know what it is for Oregon, it's 21 and a half cents for every mile you drive in Oregon. 21 and a half cents per mile. So, you know, if you do 500 miles, be on a lookout for about $107.50 or something, I think. You know, if you can do the calculation. Uh, let's look at uh, Reefer. So, you know, if you're going to go through Oregon, ask, ask Rob here in the cops. Ask this guy right here. Boom, ask this guy. Bam. The dean. The dean will tell you. Oregon is expensive. You better make sure you get the right rate. And you just don't drive through Oregon just to drive through Oregon. I mean, you, you know, you just don't do it. Um, unless you want to pay you lots of money and help with their scenery. Okay, here's your uh, reefer. Not looking so great. Not as good as the other trailers. Um, they do have some little better stuff right here. But not that great. All right, we'll go into find loads. Um, today, we'll invite, uh, let's see, any of the uh, LTC contractors, any of you LTC contractors sitting and not driving, uh, want to join in, might want to chat a little bit. There is the link. Click on it. We will let you in. Uh, all others, probably not letting you in today. Boot you out of the studio. All right, here we go. Atlanta, Georgia. We're in Atlanta already, 1,044. Let's take a look. You can see that the, you know, <clears throat> this is just on, and Thor. Thor, you know, he could be uh, an LTC contractor, you know, uh, one of these days. But if he wants to join in and just chat for a while, there's the link. Um, but as you can see, the, you know, of course, the dad boards going to have more loads than what's on here, but it just shows you that, uh, one, two, three, there's over a thousand loads within 150 mile radius of Atlanta. And look at all the money. Salem, South, South Carolina, Cincinnati, Ohio, 1,791 a mile. One pick, one drop. If you take a look at that, it is $1.76 above. It's time to make the money, folks. Time to make the money. And <clears throat> You know, we'll do a schools in session again on rate per mile. On how rate per mile, yes, it's nice to know uh, cost per mile, CPM, right? Nice to know your cost per mile, but you can't run your trucking company just on cost per mile because it varies 
and you just can't figure it out a pen and paper, which you can, but it's not accurate. It's only accurate to that day. So, because every business has a daily cost, a daily cost. It doesn't have a uh, cost per mile cost every single day. It's got a daily cost. You know, it's nice to know. It's a good figure to know. That way it gives you some form of, you know, when you're looking for loads. Yeah, this equals my cost per mile of last week or yesterday, if you keep that good a track of it. Um, but is it right to the penny on that, you know, day where you're at? And how many miles is that for? Uh, so it's a good tool to say, okay, last month my cost per mile was a 88 cents or a dollar five or, you know, whatever. Uh, this month it could be different. Could be different. A bigger CEO. I was thinking the same thing. Uh, so I have very little control over Right from out across my right. More control over revenue per day. That's exactly right, Robert. That's if you want to be successful as an owner operator, yes, it's nice to know the numbers. That's why you should use some type of a program to keep track. Whether it's trucking office that we use, there's discount code right down, you know, everybody knows it. Uh, whether it's that or it's um, you know, trucking pro, another good program, whether it's you know, any of the other ones out there or your own spreadsheets, right? Uh, hey, thanks for the, thanks for the $2 uh, deal there. He says, uh, I talked about the same thing on my show, right? So that's the thing. Revenue per day basically is the only way to really, to really run efficiently and know that you're making the money because every business has a cost per day. It doesn't matter if you're trucking, a hair salon, a bar, anything, a store, uh, lawn care, it doesn't matter. If you have utility bills, rent, uh, mortgage, whatever you have, divide that by 365 days and that's your cost per day for that one piece. And you keep on and then the only thing you can't control in trucking is your variable cost and you got fixed cost like your insurance for the year your truck payment trailer payment if you got it uh, license plate things like that are fixed costs variable cost is going to be all you know your maintenance and breakdowns now that's why if you know what it cost to run that truck for maintenance, eight cents a mile, 10 cents a mile, 12 cents a mile, 14 cents a mile, and it, it increases with the age of the truck. So if you're at 12 cents a mile, that's variable, but you can add that into your daily cost, right? You can add in your, you can add in that maintenance factor. You could say, okay, I'm averaging $12,000 a year in maintenance repairs and everything. That's a thousand bucks a month. Divide, you know, if you divide that by 365, you have a daily cost for that. So you can go a little high, right? You can say, okay, I'm going to say 17,000, up it by five grand, divided by 365, have daily cost. And that way you're covered for any of the other unforeseen. And then at the end of the year, guess what? You don't have a lot more money in your maintenance fund because you didn't use it all. And you got to know your home expenses too. You got to put all that in there. You got to put in all the stuff in there. Your pay that you want to pay yourself. You got to put in all your home expenses, cars, credit cards, you know, mad money, whatever you want to call it. To be successful, yes, your trucking company can make money and you could still go broke because you're not covering your home, your living expenses. Um, so it's great to cover to include that in your daily cost. Because if you want to work 20 days a month and you 
work 15 and then all of a sudden you get sick. Then you're down for six or seven days and you come back. So, okay, I wasn't going to work those weekends, but now I'm going to work them and you still make your 20 days. Now, if you're just running on cost per mile and you know, you're based on 10,000 miles a month and you ran 3000 miles and you got sick and you didn't run for a week. And then all of a sudden, bam, you come out there and you can't make those miles. Cost per mile did you absolutely nothing because you're not going to make that money. You're going to be in the hole, so forth and so forth. So you just got to look at the track record, right? Look at the track record. Um, you got to know those numbers. And you, you can't go by monthly. You, you better do it by daily because daily is way easier to control than setting something up monthly. Because what happens if something happens and you don't work for that much time, then now your monthly changes. That's going to be a, a lot bigger number. Exactly. Click it and ship it money. <laughs> right here. During the pandemic, how could you run on an RPM rate per mile was terrible. Had to chase the miles, which gave you revenue per day. That's right, revenue per day. So, you know, it's a big controversy between, you know, everybody on YouTube, you know, cost per mile, you got to know this, you got to know that. You know, some people say day, some people break it down. Hey, it is what it is. Uh, but everybody that uses your cost per day and look at the loads, it's easier to run. So, for example, if I came way down here and I want to pass by all this great money and uh, let's say I was down here, dollar ninety seven, and you know somebody says, "Well, I need two two twenty a mile," based on their thing, right? But are they including all miles, right? Are they including all miles? So you can go, okay, you look at this, and let's say you need $400 per day net profit after fuel. Well, the profit calculator is great. You click on it, and it says you got 697, 559 miles. It's a one-day run. If it's a one-day run, boom, you got it. It's easy, easy math. But if you were saying, I need 220 a mile, you wouldn't take the run because it doesn't, it doesn't make it. But if your cost per day... It's 400, even at the 220, let's say it's 400, bam. Because look at this. If you're $2 a mile, let's say a guy's at $2 a mile, and he's based on 10,000 miles, that's 20 grand a month, right? 20 grand a month. And that's gross. That's what he needs, you know, that's what he needs to gross to, to do all his numbers and so forth and so forth. Uh, but now if his net out of all that was 12,000, which would be $400 a day, you could sit there and look at this right here and say, bam, I could take that. But in his other calculation, he can't take that because it's based on miles and so forth and so forth. Medu says the only answer to people with the wrench. No, that's not true because I don't even know who has a wrench. Uh, the software I'm using to run this program now, I can't even see who mm -hmm. has a wrench, so I really don't care. Um, oh, you want to know Secure is New York coming to South North Carolina? Well, you'll see that in a minute. Uh, so, if I can make 1000 per day at 120 or make 800 a day at $2, it's simple. I choose one take one K. <laughs> um, <clears throat> here we go. We will uh, me do. Here you go. I, I'll I'll get to your to your uh, question here, and then we'll move on here. He wants to know Syracuse, New York. Yeah, ah, come on, Syracuse, New York. And where does he want to go? Going, coming south to North Carolina. Well, I'll just go Charlotte, and we'll do like a hundred fifty mile radius. Run. I was do two hundred mile radius around Charlotte, and um, 
any day, 17 loads going down that way. Uh, here's some just posted. And as you can see, here's $1.28 out of BMIC. I wouldn't haul for BMIC because they're shortchanging everybody. Um, that's a really low rate. The rates are paying way higher than that coming out of there. Uh, they're paying $1.80, $1.90 a mile. Uh, so they're way low. But here's Wyoming, New York to easily South Carolina. You can come on down here and look. Here's Virginia, North Carolina. Here's a Greensboro. Left lane logistics. What's their credit score? Terrible. Absolutely horrific. Um, I don't think I'd haul for them. And you're paying 50 days on a trans credit, 46 on Thunder. I wouldn't even bother with them. Direct Connect Logistics to Charlotte out of Depew, New York. 661 miles, that might be a good one. Pepsi Logistics, if you can get them to answer the phone, you might be able to get that. Bigger you see, I also provide a free cost calculator so you can figure your rate per day before you dive in. There you go. There you go. Um, and of course, they got this new profit calculator here. If you just want that, you just go in here and you put in your miles. Let's so say you got a 300 mile load paying 1200, or I mean 300 mile load paying $4 a mile, gives you 1200 bucks. And then if you're getting seven miles a gallon, let's say, and your fuel is 210, then you would see that's $90. And if you have toll costs, if you have a dispatch fee, you can put that in there. And say, okay, my total profit's 290 a mile after paying the company and my fuel, I'm gonna make $870 on that 300 mile run. Now, if it was only paying 350, and he'd be at seven fifty, and if you go down here to a dollar fifty, he'd be at two seventy. Um, so, depending on your your daily rate you need, um, you know, for the dollar seventy five, you need three hundred bucks. You you've made it, right? And there it is. Ooh, Smecca, what's happening? What's happening, man? So, there's the profit calculator. It's a really nice uh, piece of equipment there to use that they supply. Rate check's another good one. So like Westchester, Ohio to Springfield, Missouri, a van low to get the rate, and <clears throat> you're gonna see an average. Um, the low was $1.30 in the last couple of weeks on up to 224, average is buck 75, and then you see the nice charts. And it gives you this nice map of how you get there. All right, so fine loads. Let's keep this moving. Let's go to Columbus, Ohio, and we know that you got a lot of good freight up on the uh, East Coast. Going anywhere, 822. Let's get off post today's new rate per mile. And there you go. Coyote Logistics. Look at the money, folks. 917 a mile. One pick, one drop. It was 381. It's 917. It's a thousand bucks. 43,000 pounds, 100 miles. You look at the rate check, it's 537 above. It's one and a half uh, factor times above the average rate. <clears throat> and, you know, if you're doing the profit calculator, that's really good money, 882 a mile after fuel. And just like I said, if you're, let's say you're over at uh, the Big Blue and got their trailer, it's 6154 for that day, 561 on the miles. Now, if you're like, hey, Al, and this load says it picks up today and delivers tomorrow. And he calls and says it could be delivered today. Boom, he runs it over there. He gets that off and he's got another load because that's just what Al does. He takes his time. His time management is awesome. He knows how to use it and he works it to his ability. Uh, and that's not a thing you can do over here that you can't do at some mega fleets and some other places. But uh, if the delivery time is set, or tomorrow or the next day and you call the, the receiver and they want to take you early, go deliver it early and go and make more money. 
More like Kentucky, Virginia. Check this one out. Here, let me get myself out of the picture. Bam, look at that. 400, 400, this 367. 1999 now, Iowa, Coralville, Iowa, out of Groveport, Ohio, 362 a mile. That's way above. That's like double. It's like double. <clears throat> and you can see it's still over $3 a mile. A lot of two plus dollar per mile. So this, this is where it's better to be on the spot market than a contract freight. So there's all different time, times of the year where people say, oh, it's better with contract freight than the spot market is up and down, up and down. Yes, that's true. And then it's true on this side. So it all averages out. So it's just basically on what you would rather do, right? There's a lot of people like click and go systems, but guess what? Spot market has click and go system. They got a lot of click and go. Um, <clears throat> and only with their click and go on the spot market, you can actually, you can actually sit there and bid. Tell them you want more money, right? Give me a call. I have an offer you can't refuse. I refuse. <laughs> Michael Bell. Yeah, I refuse. Uh, what else you got going on here? Um, all right. So we'll do a new search. And since we were over there one time, <clears throat> we'll go to the other side and we'll go to Albany. Now yeah, let's go to MP Fuel Corp, man. Let's just get out there. Let's just go to the Bronx. He likes to haul out of the Bronx, so you know we'll give him some Bronx stuff. Seven hundred twenty-three uh, Italian stallion. Take a look at this stuff. Six hundred bucks Jersey to Port Chester, New York. Ten bucks a mile. Here's one for you. North Wales, PA to North Brantford, Connecticut, 8,000 pounds. That's a good load. Uh, let's keep on going down. 1,100 bucks. Brightingsville, PA to Westfield, Mass. Another great load. Cowan Beverages or Cowan Brokerage. We have a lot of beverages over there. What else we got going on? Talcanic to the mass. Everybody knows what that is. P and G, right? Uh, that's above. So, of course, there's the East Coast. That's looking good. The South is looking good. Atlanta, Georgia, 1,049. We'll post a link one more time. Should you get your authority first or the truck first? I'd make sure I had a truck. Because you get the authority first, and if you can't get a truck, uh, then you're paying all that extra for, for nothing. Uh, Bowersville, Georgia to Bridgeport, New Jersey, 25, 23, 67 a mile. You know, unless you wanted to put on owner operators or something and then you know just run it like that rate checks dollar 19 above the 248 which gives you 367 a mile atlanta to carlisle pa there's another going to internal server here we'll try it again see if we get another server here here's a georgia to jessup maryland 303 so that's even above So if anybody wants to join in, go ahead and join in because we're we're almost at a 30 minute mark and then we're out of here. Uh, don't know if we'll do one tomorrow. So everybody have a great Fourth of July. If you get home and have a barbecue and stuff like that, um, but we're almost out of here. We got things to do. What else we got? Oh, we got to go to Carlsbad, California. Why? Because it's home of Thunder Funded. And then maybe we'll do a, a video on, uh, maybe we'll do an old school video. Maybe we'll do a, a schools and session video, do one of those, maybe, you know, sometime next week, and then get back into how to become an owner operator, what to do, all that good stuff. Uh, do all that great stuff. 
is it worth now to upgrade equipment? Well, yeah, now's a good time to upgrade equipment because prices are low. You know, they're low. Oh, Lord, who do we have coming in here? Oh, who is this? Look at this character. What's up, Jeffrey? <laughs> Little Mac Jack, what's going on? Hey, man, uh, I see you on there showing all them great rates and everything, but I got a question. I, I don't have an answer for you, but go ahead. All right. Uh, you hear all this talk of this COVID-19 and everything uh, blooming up again and everything, and people starting to shut down. How do you think that's going to affect us if it if this gets out of hand like it did last time? Well, we could go back to the same rates. We could. Right? That's a possibility. Uh, but what I don't I don't think the shutdown will be like it was. I don't think they're closing factories. I think they'll shut the restaurants back down in the in the gathering places, right? Yeah. Like the beaches and things like that. They might limit that, but I don't think they're going to shut the big factories on like GM and Ford and Chrysler were because I, I think they've lost a lot of money when they've done that. And I don't think those companies are going to put up with it. All right. I mean, that's well, just my opinion on that. Um, I mean, don't you think the big three have uh, a lot of money and play in the game? I bet you they do. I was wondering, though, but everybody's going to get paranoid again, start panic buying. Uh, well, well, I mean, panic buying, the stores are still, what, a third empty? I don't know, man. My Walmart looked pretty good. Well, well, I go, you, did you go to Walmart and try to buy a bicycle? No, but the, the meat, though, I'll be <laughs> honest, the meat, the meat's been a shortage. Right, uh, right. You got because you still had that pork plants and stuff were down, right? Yeah. And uh, the beef and things like that. So that that still have to come up. But I told, did I tell you a? a I told you a good a good thing to remember about watermelons, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never again, man. Go <laughs> haul them when it gets too close to the Fourth of July or after. Uh, yeah, you got jokes. <laughs> you won't want them. <laughs> uh, but you did okay, though. I mean, you know, you did oh, yeah, all I'm right. Very, I'm very satisfied with how this uh, little 10-day outing went, man. It's probably yeah. some of the best money I've ever made. Uh, yeah, you're doing good. Got a nice yeah. trailer? Oh, I got a brand spanking new uh, trailer. You know, some nice guy helped me out. I did the down payment, and we ready to roll. You're rocking. Rocking so, from. did you, you see these good rates, though? Uh, I love it. Uh, like, the, right now, I'm doing that short hop, man. I'm getting, like, uh, 676 a mile. Uh, right. 800 bucks, pretty much. So. And if you're at a company that was um, a big mega carrier, let's say, paid by the uh, mile, what what would you make on that? Some, <laughs> from 6 a mile to what? Oh, man, I don't even want to say their name. Well, uh, no, you'd be a dollar something on that. Uh, yeah, yeah, dollar something a mile. So I might have made a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. So there's a big difference, you know, when the economy is rolling and things are back to normal. There's a big money making difference, ability, right? You have you have more ability to make more money. Exactly. I like the negotiating factor and all that good stuff. You can't do that under a contract with a mega carrier. You hey, know, and do so we bother you? Say that again. Do we bother you or do we let you run your business? Oh, I, I do everything that I want to do. Uh, so, I, I mean, like trucking it is the shit. It's everything that you said it was going to be before you come over. There's no extras. I mean, people hey. need to believe you. Let me tell you something. He's the biggest critic. Let me point that way over there, that guy. That guy over there, he says, man, it better be what it says it is. And I said, you know, it's all transfer. It's all out there, right? It's all out there. Everything, it is what it is. And uh, there you go. I mean, the only thing I ever, I just got, it was, it's when you come over here to spot mark, it's a little bit uh, confusing, you know, because when you're at a mega carrier, they're holding your hand. 
you know, that's the whole reason I want to come over here spot market so I can be more in control of what I'm doing. And uh, I get to negotiate. I mean, so my fate is in my own hands. And no, you don't you don't bug me. You don't tell me what to do. I mean, you're there whenever I need to call. Uh, I mean, it is, yeah, what, it is. what else can I say? Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't let me have any time off. Right. It's not like mega carry at five o'clock to shut the phones down. You get some after hour service you can't even get a hold of. You know, Jason, he don't care if it's two in the morning. Hey, hey, can I ask you a question? (laughs) Uh, What are you sleeping for? (laughs) Oh, man. Most people that got hidden stuff, you don't got that. Yeah, the, the pay statements are what they are, right? That was that was a little confusing at first. The, the pay statement was a little bit different when I was like, "What's this column and that column?" But it after I figured it out, it's it's, it's one hundred, you know. Yeah, just like I had um, Cascade, right? Rich, he calls me up. And he says, "Hey, uh, my fuel's wrong. Yo, you, you know." He says you overpaid me or something. He said I bought this much, but you only charged me this much. I said, no, that's the discount. Because the receipt you get the, at, from the pump's not the discount, right? Exactly. Yeah, he, he thought. He <laughs> so, you know, that's that's great. We have contractors like that say, hey, trying to call me up and say, hey, you overpaid me. You know? And I said, no, I didn't overpay you. You're just not, you don't just see the discount. I just pass it through. I mean, another that's another thing I like about, uh, like, man, we you pass on 100% of that fuel discount. I mean, when I was at that mega carrier, I'm not going to say their name or whatnot. Maybe eventually one day I will, but they didn't give you nothing. They give you like five cents. That's it. And they keep the rest for themselves uh, on the fuel discount. And I know the mega carrier is getting 50, 60 uh, cents off each gallon. They're not passing that. Cool. Over, but I get I get 100 over here. All the mega carriers keep money. They all keep part of that discount. Right. They all do. Uh, just like the Sat Brothers discount. I pass all that in. Right. That well, like the one right now is like 52 cents, sometimes up to 75 cents because, you, you know, you went to P.A. Oh, yeah. The Sat Brothers was good. It was good, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I liked it, man. I wish I could have grabbed more fuel. I just like to get enough fuel to get the job done. Uh, I should. I wish I just would have had and went and filled it up. I probably would have saved probably 75 bucks. Uh, and another good thing is, is if you're delivering one, two, or three times a week, man, you're getting money coming to the bank all the time. Oh, uh, next day, next day. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm getting more money. It's different. It's a different system, right? It's different, you know, because yeah. you could do a short run and get two hundred bucks, and do another run and get eight hundred bucks, you know, because this is different on how you fuel and you know how it all works out, right? I don't think I've had anything other 500 the short hop. That's the lowest I ever went. Look at this. Uh, the been, dean, the dean is trying to help you out. He wants to buy you some fuel. Look, he says it right there. Yeah, go ahead, send that on over there, Dean. I'll take that. <laughs> you, you know why he buys fuel for you? Go ahead. You know no. why he get the discount because he's driving a W900. That's why. <laughs> I got that big hooded truck. Right, because we got to do so many gallons a month, and Dean buys it all. He buys for the whole company, W nine hundred. Yeah, you go he ahead. Gets, I'm gonna stick with my six eighty, man. <laughs> negative five miles per gallon. <laughs> yeah, I do a little bit better than that. But, uh, <laughs> if he's if he goes out west, uh, he's probably at three and a half. You know, yeah, we're, we're not gonna those mountains. Yeah, he's probably yeah. And if the dean wasn't working, he'd be on here right now with us. But yeah, so we we meet up over there. They're doing an inspection in that uh, rest area, right? I got I got to meet up with with little Mac here. Yes. I saw Cal meet up with you and uh, bring you the stuff for this trailer. And I I pull. I said, dude, they're doing inspections over here. They're what? Because <laughs> you were sleeping there. He didn't know. They're doing inspections, so we went and got something to eat. And I'll tell you what, that that messed me up that day. What's that? That Arby's, man, that tore me up. Oh, oh yeah, the food. Yeah, it uh, tore me up. I was lucky to make it home. Yeah. 
I, I well, don't know, man. I was ready to get up out of that rest area, to be honest, though, because that old janky old trailer I started out with, man. I mean, they look at that darn brake chamber. It was fixed down there in Kentucky by Billy Bob's second cousin or whatever. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was it was funny looking, wasn't it, yeah? Oh, it was, yeah. The, well, you know, I, I called them up because uh, they were going to charge me again for another month's uh, rent for that trailer. And I says, I don't have that trailer. We dropped that off. Yeah, can you believe that? Parked it right there at their front door, man. Yeah. That place, yeah. that was a waste of money. Oh, look at, look at Rich trying to brag. 8.3 right now on his fuel mileage. And what's he got? Uh, T680. Oh, well, you doing better than me, friend. I mean, how much you hauling getting 8.3 right now? Well, you got 1,000 pounds on the box? <laughs> Well, Rich, if you're not rolling down, click on the uh, the thing here. Click on what? I told him to click on the thing. That oh, man, I done lost my. Uh, no, we got you. I you got my audio. He sounds like he's a. He sounds like a call call, yeah. like, Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. You're right. Oh, I don't know, man. We got technical difficulties. So I'm going to go ahead and jump up off of your uh, Jeff. Thank you very much. All right. All right. We'll see you. All later. So let, let's talk about some things that are going to happen here. Uh, since there's a lot of uh, the contractors on the feet. Things get back to normal. Uh, we get switched over to the other ELD by the end of the year. And Rich and Rich, the two Riches, and uh, Jason and I am, and uh, you know, we're running the the new ELD and uh, and John, right? So we got the two J's, the two R's. They're they're running the new ELD. So when we get everybody else on the new ELD by the end of the year, uh, this ELD has a competition um, part of it. Right, it's got a competition feature, so they get to see where they're at on the safe driving part of it, right? And there's all kinds of driver dynamics, and so they can keep track. So when we get everybody on board on that system, we'll do like a quarterly safety bonus, and you know we might do first and second. Uh, you know, every quarter or whoever is the top one, we might do that to start out or we might do the top three positions. Just depends how many contractors are on and the more contractors that come on over the years, uh, the more spots, you know, every quarter we will give. Um, but I think that would be, you know, everybody likes competition, right? Right, Dean? Right, Dean? Right, little Matt? Everybody likes competition. Um, to see where they're at. So if we do something like that, uh, you know, it just gives them, you know, something to look at and, you know, it would be percentage, right? So it'd be whatever quarter, whatever they hauled that quarter, it'd be an extra, you know, percent, 2%, whatever it is, 3%, you know, whatever we figured out to be, um, that would be a quarterly bonus to whoever is operating that truck within the parameters. Uh, so little chance to make extra money. See the Dean likes competition. Dean got something, got cotton balls in his ears right there. No, I'm just kidding. That looks, that looks like one of those expensive, uh, air pods from Apple. Uh, Thor competes with himself. That's right. Thor would probably win. See if, if Thor gets over here and, uh, Anybody that worked at the Big Orange, which most of the guys here worked at the Big Orange, they all know about, you know, all the stuff that that Qualcomm would yell and tell on them about and everything. Uh, but for contractors, there's no bonus. Here, we will give some type of a bonus to the top performers. And every quarter is different, right? It could be different because... Uh, you know, 
there you go. Oh, we will. We will probably be giving away if anybody wants to pass it on. Next week, when we do some of those videos, uh, a Hot Logic, not the mini, but the big one. We're going to give away a Hot Logic uh, to a truck driver. You got to be a truck driver to win. We're not going to give a Hot Logic away to somebody that's not in the industry driving a truck. So we will give away a Hot Logic next week. And I'll show it. It's it's a uh, black case. Um, show it up there, and, and that's what you get. Uh, Robert, I got to tell you one thing, man. That Dyson vacuum cleaner is brilliant, man. It's 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 vacuuming my whole pole barn floor. It's great. Sucks up the dirt like crazy. You know, I took the tractor in there. I had to rebuild the the uh, front axle, and I done that grease and everything over it sucked up all that oil and everything i just stuck it right i just let the uh 80 w90 fall on the floor you know gallon of it and i just took that dyson right to it sucked it right up man it works great actually doesn't make any noise anymore got a lot of lubrication in there man it's, it's doing awesome awesome what's up facebook what's going on uh there you go, Thor. Bonus equals incentive to perform. And it's extra money. That's right. It's extra money. All right, we're out of here. 46 minutes and some change. Nobody else wanted to join in. Um, if somebody clicks that link, within the next 30 seconds, we'll stay on the air. If not, we're out of here because uh, we got things to do. <clears throat> what time is it? Oh, we got to go anyway. One more shot. One, two, three, load board. Bam. There you go. Carl, uh, this is California. Look at all that great money in California. Whoo, whoo, whoo. Look at it. Carl's bad. Look, it's Walnut, California, McCarran, Nevada, 1400 bucks, 569 a mile. That is up. We're going to slide down here. 3500 354 a mile. And we got 3650 344 a mile. And we slide on down here. 322 to Idaho, California, Idaho. Um, there you go. Now, we could go over here and say, what's your highest posted rate? Bam. And we're going to come up with, drum roll, please. Compton, California to Boston, Massachusetts, $6,500 to $16 a mile. $5,600 to come back to Pennsylvania. Check it out, folks. The money is there. The money's there. What's up, Wallace Over? What's going on? Don't laugh so hard you fall out of the chair. We wouldn't want you to uh, have to hit the button that you're falling and you can't get up. All right. $4,900 to North Carolina. Uh, $4,901. Wait a minute. Wait a minute here. We can't shortchange North Carolina. They get the extra penny. $4,901. $4,901. $4,750 back to Hotlanta. You know, cruise over there. Minnesota. There you go. Where are you at over tax in Minnesota? Get Pamela B out there. Make her drive that truck out there to California. See Thunder Funding and come back for 218 a mile. Boom. There you go. Um, so good money. And for a place where you don't think you're going to get any freight, one more place and we're out of here. Seattle, Washington, where 9,000 times a day, it's probably raining over there. Uh, New York out of there, 149 a mile. <coughs> Wouldn't take it. Uh, you can go $2,400 over there to Colorado, two seventeen dollars to Utah, uh, three oh four dollars a mile right here, Forest Grove, Oregon. Get down to Oregon, um, Cascade. I haven't sent you that yet, but, you know, we did figure out your Oregon, what it cost you to run through there. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll get with that later. 201 a mile down to Idaho. So you can get out of Oregon for some decent money. You don't have to take these dollar things. Um, you can get out for some decent money. All right, we're out of here. We'll see you later. And uh, hope everybody has a great day out there. And keep it between the lines, right? <laughs>